In this video, I'm going to show you how to add the soft gradient and glows to your designs and illustrations in Photoshop to add form and really bring them to life. I designed this scene for a big collaborative project with 60 amazing other animators called Lots of Love that I released recently, so go and check that out if you haven't yet. I designed this in Illustrator to get these clean vector shapes knowing that I would export it into Photoshop for shading. And everything I wanted to shade was on its own separate layer. The best way to export out of Illustrator into Photoshop and keep all of your layers is go up to File, Export, Export As, make sure Use Artboards is selected, save it whatever you want, click Export, and then on this menu, choose your resolution and make sure that you have Right Layers Maximum Editability selected. Click OK. And that creates a Photoshop file, a PSD, that's exactly the same as your Illustrator file with all of your layers separated and I've added some into their own folders and color coded them just so it's easier for me to keep track of. I'm using a 22 inch desktop Cintiq to do this shading, but for some simpler shapes you could get by fine just using a mouse. So first off, let's select our brush tool and we're going to select a soft round brush, just the very basic one, that's all we need. And I'm going to open up my planet main folder and create a new layer above our planet main layer. Let's increase the size of our brush with our right square brackets tool. And I'm going to press Alt on my keyboard and eye drop this background color. And that's the same reason I have this color palette at the top, is so that I can just easily eye drop any color I need. And I'm going to start by shading in a crescent on the bottom right of this layer, assuming the light source is coming from the top left. And you can see that my strokes are covering a lot of the other layers. And I've got the ring around the planet separated into a couple of layers, so that'll be easy to animate. But it doesn't matter that they're covering them here because we're gonna stop all that by using a clipping mask. Let's hide the background layer so we can see a bit more what's going on. So here we've got our first gradient glow layer. And I'm gonna make this a clipping mask of our planet main layer simply by holding the Alt key or Option key on a Mac and hovering over until you get this icon, which has this L-shaped arrow pointing down. Let's click on that. And now that applies that layer only to the layer underneath, our planet main. Let's turn our background back on. So now we've got our planet receding into darkness on the bottom right, but I'm gonna add something a bit more interesting to this gradient here. With our planet main selected, I'm gonna click on adding another layer, and that will create a new clipping mask layer underneath our other one. Let's eye drop the blue color here, and I'm gonna click and add a bit more of a this saturated blue gradient underneath. And I like the way this gives it just a bit more saturation as we fade in from light to dark here. And then I'm gonna create a new layer on top, make that a clipping mask again. And this time I'm gonna eye drop the pink layer. And I'm also going to reduce my brush size. And then I'm gonna click and just find the edge here. And then just go slowly around it. I don't wanna go too far. Something like that is fine. And then we just get a nice bit of rim lighting. And a really useful shortcut that you might not be aware of is that you can quickly toggle between the opacity of your brush by pressing any of the numbers in the row above your letters on the keyboard. So if I press five, my brush drops to 50% opacity. So I can be a bit more liberal applying my brush strokes. And often I'll go down to maybe two or even one to just add some real subtlety to these layers. I think I might go up to maybe four, which is 40%. Let's take my brush size down low and just add a bit of pink to the edge here, as if this is light reflecting off these rings here. There we are. Let's increase a bit of the pink glow on the bottom right here. And let's have one coming in from the top left as well. I think that'll look interesting. Now let's add some glow behind the planet, which is gonna look a bit more like its atmosphere. So let's create a new layer, drag that underneath planet main, and I'm gonna select our bright blue layer. And I'm really gonna increase our brush size here. And then I'm gonna start just lightly drawing around the edge of our planet. We're still on 40% brush size. And then I'm gonna lower my brush down a little bit and just come in a bit tighter around the edge. There we are, and now I'm gonna create a new layer and eye drop this pink color, and then go in and just add a pink glow around there as well. So I'm working with this brush size, which is 250, but I'm also gonna drop down lower. I'm gonna just create more of a tighter glow around the edge of the planet. And what I wanna do here by going with a smaller brush size is I wanna lose the edge of the planet here. See so if we, zoom out, it kind of looks a bit sort of fuzzy. There isn't a clear defined edge, and I really like that look. It means that the light is really intense, that we can't even tell what the form of the planet is. And it kind of has a nice soft 80s look, which I really like. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics like animation, illustration, design, freelancing, and more. It has classes for every skill level taught by some of the best in the industry, with short classes so you don't have to put your life on hold and it makes it easy to explore new topics and passions without a huge commitment. Just some of the amazing classes that I'm inspired by are Character Animation Basics, Creating a Dance Loop with After Effects in Photoshop by B. Grandinetti, 
Motion graphics in Cinema 4D, design an 80s inspired animated GIF by Gustavo Torres, simple character animation by Fraser Davidson, and illustration for designers, create your own geometric animal by DKNG Studios. And I'm sure it comes as no surprise that I believe that the best investment you can make is in your own education. And Skillshare is ridiculously affordable. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So it is a no brainer. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two month free trial of premium membership. So you can explore your own creativity. Now I definitely want to add some cast shadows as well from these eyes and the lips as well. So I'm going to create a new clipping mask above our planet main layer. I'm going to select a background color, the darkest color we have. Maybe drop that down to 30%. And with our brush set, again, pretty small. I'm just going to draw around the bottom right edges of these shapes. And I've got my left hand's fingers on Control alt z because I'm always undoing and then trying again if I don't hit the line exactly where I need to. There's a lot of Control z and undoing in this process. And that's also part of the reason why I'm not naming these layers. At the moment, I'm not naming these, you know, pink highlight, blue shadow, black shadow, because during this process, I experiment with a lot of colors and sometimes end up deleting a lot of layers. So there's no point naming all of them if I'm only going to delete half of them again later. Now, normally you should be labeling all your layers, but in this instance, it just makes sense to not label these ones. Okay, we've got some nice shadows going on here. Let's create another layer underneath that. Again, select our more saturated blue. And we're gonna add some blue underneath that as well, which is gonna darken up these shadows, but also add some color and saturation into them. There, that's pretty good. Another thing that's useful to do is to select our layer. We can press V to get off our brush tool and, and just have our selection tool here. And we can use those same shortcuts, the number keys on our keyboard to alter the opacity of our layer. So if we press five, this layer goes down to 50% opacity, eight, it goes to 80. And I often just play around with these if I find if a shadow is looking a bit too intense, I might just drop the layer opacity down to maybe 50%. Let's try that on both of them and maybe make the saturated one 100% and then the darker one maybe down to 50. And I do a lot of experimenting with that because it's really easy and it's non-destructive as well. So we can always undo this and take it back to 100% and make any changes from there. And it's pretty much the same process for all the objects here. I'll show you a bit how I do the eyes. I'm gonna create a new clipping mask above our eyes group. Select our red color to do the shading in here cover up the bottom right of those hearts with this red color. Again, my brush is at 30%. Then on a new layer, I'm going to select a yellow color and color in the top left. I think I might want to make my brush 100% yellow for this so it's nice and bright. And there we are, just cover the top left of these hearts. And then let's create one more clipping mask. I'm going to select a pink that's the middle of our heart, make our brush size really low, and then just cover up the very edges of these hearts to create a nice bit of rim lighting, the same as we did on our planet. And that is just gonna create a bit of separation between them and the shadows. Ah, and now I can see over here on this heart on the left, we've got a bit of the yellow coming in here from the layer underneath. So I'm just gonna select my eraser tool and this yellow layer and just delete that yellow section here because I don't really want that on this left heart and then continue with that rim lighting. And in a few minutes, we've already shaded in a lot of this image. Now, a couple of things you need to be aware of when working with gradients that are this soft is banding. Banding is where you save an image and there's some really clean barriers between all the colors in your gradient. Now, the best way to combat that is to add some noise to your image. And you can be pretty subtle with it. My method of adding noise from an image like this is to select a new fill color and make that 50% gray. I'll take everything else back to zero. I make the black value 50% so we get an perfectly middle gray. Press Alt and Delete on our keyboard, which will create a new layer with that fill. I'm gonna right click and select Convert to Smart Object. And then I'm gonna change its blending mode to Overlay. And because this is 50% gray, it's not gonna have any impact on the colors underneath. But when we add the filter noise, add noise, let's add 10% so we can really see the effect. It adds noise to that layer and the overlay blending mode makes it really obvious within the gradients. Less so within the big flat colors like the background middle of our planet here, but in these gradients, you can see a lot more of the noise. Now 10 is obviously way too much. We've got way too much going on here. And that's why we've made this a smart object. We can double click on the add noise over here. Five is probably good enough for this and that'll really help with the banding. Now, I always love to add textures to my images. So I'm gonna drag in a paper texture. This one is of some paper painted black and I'm gonna change the blending mode to screen, add a curves effect with control M, just increase the black point a bit. And there we are, we've got a nice 80s looking sort of soft gradient texture across this whole image. 
And when we've got the whole image shaded, it looks like this. Doing the final shading on my illustrations is my absolute favorite part of the process. So please give this a go and tag me on Instagram with anything you make using this technique. I would love to see it. To discover the best ways to learn motion design, I've created a short playlist of videos that I'll think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. Please like the video and consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week. I'll see you in the next video.